Crime rates, councilwoman hesitates, public gets irate, but forgets to vote dates. Weatherman complaining, predicted sun, it's raining. Everyone's protesting, boyfriend keeps suggesting, you're not like all of the rest. population was two billion. The Chrysler plant where my husband worked employed 17,000 people. And if you threw a stone up in the air in this area, it fell to the ground and fall on a tip as a Chrysler worker. Mm -hmm. Within a few years, because of globalization and decentralization, the Chrysler Jefferson plant only employed 2,000. If you threw a stone up in the air, it'd fall on a vacant lot, an abandoned house. And to most people, that vacant lot or abandoned house seemed like light. But to African-American elders who had come from the South, that vacant lot was a place to grow food, and also to teach young people that it takes time to make change. And when we created Detroit Summer, these elders joined in order to work with the young people. And they helped them, invited the young people to help them in their gardens. Mm -hmm. And the young people loved it. It gave them contact with the earth. It started the urban agricultural movement. A whole lot of things happen. Changes everything. Your school's going to have a garden, isn't it? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm wondering if what she said to you, if you feel like that triggered something in you, or did it, did it make you recognize something in yourself? No, I think that was always there. I mean, I was reading about the civil rights movement before Detroit Summer which is why the language for the call to Detroit Summer so resonated with me. So, you know, it was um, young people have always been the defining factor in social justice movements, so too can young people be the factor in Detroit. And just as young people travel down south during Freedom Summer in the 60s, mm -hmm. we need young people to be in Detroit the summer of 1992. That, and I thought, fin finally, Someone's giving me an opportunity to make a difference in this city. I know this. I, I know what this city used to be because everyone loves to talk about what Detroit used to be. Um, I knew what I wanted um, for myself in this city, and I knew it didn't exist. And here was an opportunity to help contribute to what I wanted to exist. And so I think. It was always there. I just had never had an avenue for it. No one had given me an outlet for that part of myself, certainly not school. And that's what place-based education can do for this country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we spoke at the Boss Educational Center as one organization that was starting to transform and reimagine what education looked like. It was really hot. It was in a packed gym. Um, in the school that we hope to open in when we get authorized. So it's really a big deal to have the conversation in that space and invite community members to come and talk about, have this community conversation about education. And we asked people to fill out two things. One, the prompt was, what if school were a place where? 
and then ask people to just kind of put post-it notes. We had 120 responses. Wow. And really profound things. You Could know, you like, what is school were a place where I wasn't judged? Really just profound Feel philosophical sorry. things. Really and these are people, they're not school leaders, where they're mm -hmm. not like, you know, they were students and parents and teachers um, who are coming up with like the next education. The administrators would be allowing teachers to be creative. The teachers would be really redefining their role in front of the classroom, that parents would be involved. One young person wrote, if parents were reimagining educator, education, they'd be better role models. Like, you know, they'd be better role models for us. You've taken on a big task with a huge commitment of passion. What happens if it gets, it's like, oh my gosh, what have I got myself into? Because I'm thinking you're going to come to that point. I've seen a been lot of schools. Many You've times. been there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you do? What do I do? Well, hmm. we'll have to have some kind of, you'll have to do something in the community to say what do we do now. Ah, you, you turn to the community. It's, you know, that's actually one of the things I've learned from Grace, but it takes me often a while to realize that I, we have those resources, that that's actually where we're rich. We don't have a lot of, we don't have any financial capital. We have very little political capital, but what we have is this 20 years of relationships that we've built and nurtured over time with people who are thinking about this stuff, who are really thoughtful about it, who've done their own organizing. Um, and there are times when we, why didn't we think to just ask? And then there are times when we think, oh, I'm so glad we asked. Mm. Um, so I, I think the, the going, pulling on our resources is, is actually really useful advice. But I will tell you, it's funny to every time I remember to do it, it's, I am amused that I forgot to do it. Oh. That That's funny? pretty good. <laughs> That's a great, yeah, it's a great line. I'm wondering what it is that you feel that you're learning from Julia. Well, if Julia had asked me, which she did not, she didn't <laughs> start uh, our own school, mm -hmm. I might have said no. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad they did. Well, I might have said, you know, it's, it's too much work, it's too much struggle, there's a whole lot just raising the money. You did say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you did listen to that then. I listened. I understood. I heard what you said in terms of being bogged down. I remember you saying that you'd have to worry about the school building and get the upkeep of the building and all of this kind of like really institutional things which will take away from actually educating children. And so we thought, well, how do we figure out how to not get bogged down by building stuff? And how do we figure out how to really help have the teachers be involved in administration so it's not just a superintendent? And how do we involve parents? And how, so it was, I feel as if, like even Maya Satoro, Ing, I remember she said something that made me, I'm going to call her because she's learned things politically about how to do good things for children and protect yourself from the politics of educa the educational system right now. So it's not that I didn't ignore you. I just took that and said, oh, these are all of the pitfalls that we could fall into that we're going to really have to be deliberately think about so that we can really make it about children. And when we came across place-based education, I knew we had it. Because I knew mm -hmm. that if we made school about the community, and made that central, then all the other stuff would just, we'd figure it out. And we have 20 years of partnerships to pull upon. And, and when Henry was born, Grace said, if we don't have a school to send Henry to in five years, we all have failed. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's your challenge. So, you know, it's taken me a little while. Seven.